District 4, Proving Worth The Ophidian of creation does not sleep. When he tires, the void consumes him, ruling until he too becomes tired enough to be devoured. Sire was crying. Quite loudly, if it is appropriate to add. He didn't care who was watching. His pseudo-caravan had mostly disbanded. They'd traveled far north enough to where there were now frequent settlements everywhere they went, and roads that could take the Sanjiyun in almost endless directions. Sire Eskol was still the continent to his north, the year in Babel, where sorcerers and Sanjiyun in almost endless directions. Sire Eskol was still the continent to his north, the year in Babel, where sorcerers and wizards casted spells and performed rituals using the magic power of the divine winds that shaped the lands. Also, despite not being one united people, they all spoke and used English, in nearly all professional and recreational cases, which C was looking forward to. But not at the current moment. At the current moment, Ashoka was crying his eyes out. Loudly. He'd stopped at several minor trading hubs during his journey through Palea Jersey, and they were all mostly the same. People were surprised to see him, they asked him the same dozen or so questions, and then they mostly left him alone, until it was time for him to leave. After damaging his stone chain to acquire Pluto's dagger, Ash needed a new weapon to use with his left shoulder, so he began forging a new chain, created with links from each of the sanguine settlements he visited. It grew to the desired size quick, and though a few links had to be removed for structural reasons, his new chain, while somewhat aggressive to look at, told the story of the boy god who'd fathered the first sanguine and had left the South Pole to judge the Church of the Urine Babel for himself. But Sire Ashoka Sierra had yet to arrive at the Urine Babel. He was still in northern Palea, Jersey. Crying. Because when he came back to the room he'd been staying in for the past few days, he was greeted not by his Hexercene, who'd become his closest companion, but instead by the rotting corpse of his Hexercene, leading out into the sanguine. He remembered Thorn. He remembered Nina. He remembered Freddy and Erica. It was all too much. This planet was too much. Whoever killed his Hexercene had left all of C.S. belongings. They didn't steal the armor on the Hexercene, or the money C. kept on its person. C. looked over to one of the Sanguine that was watching him. C. Can you? Sorry. C. Can you bury him for me? I, I can't even fucking look in his direction, C. requested through traumatizing tears. But the hexer scene was large, so they asked a few nearby sanguine to help bury Fritz the six-legged sanguine bear. Thanks you guys, C managed to say without looking at any of them. The Sanjiyun swapped glances. He could tell they had their questions to ask. They all looked older than he did. Yes, Cierto K, or uh, is, uh, is it true that you only speak English? One of the sanguine asked. Pretty much C responded hey this kind of thing happen here a lot? I mean I wasn't even robbed they do dash he couldn't even say it. M. Yeah, one of them started to say, judging by the damage this wad a sanguine. I, uh. I thought you were the demon king. Ashoka's gaze grew cold, I am. Some fucking one wants my attention. Ash had made some money tracking down and killing demons before. Due to the mass amount of divine weapons being stored away in temples rigged with demons, demons that had defeated their sanguine challengers often managed to break out of their confinement, wreaking havoc on the now popular populated planet sanguine for as long as they could without being stopped. Demons that have done a lot can do a lot more, and demons that have done a lot know how to do more. Interfering with demons in mass could become messy. Demons were far more eternal than humans or sanguine, each relationship needed to be treated like it would last trillennia. But this crossed a line. So Sire gathered a few dozen sanguine to take him to where the nearest demon was rampaging. It sounded like popcorn. None of them had acceleraptors. They all walked, so the sound of the Paleogersians fighting the demon grew gradually. C felt it. This was no Titan. This was no Knight. No Seraph. 
Who in the cock was this minor s no name dash? It pissed him off. Because when this demon's name revealed itself to Cyrus' demonic perception, in a momentous flash, C felt, in an instant, every time a human had fed this demon their focus. The demon that's the idea of spontaneous combustion was blowing up several trees each second. Their flaming branches spewed embers across the field, as acceleraptors and sanguine flew around the land and air to avoid falling to their doom. Sire felt the portion of his soul in his fist. He continued walking. The crackles of burning trees all around drowned out the speech of the sanguine. The demon was nervous. It pretended not to notice its king. It knew its judgment had arrived. This demon was weak. Sire Ashoka Sierra, standing a few feet from a thirteen-foot-tall mass of glowing, leaking flesh, thought towards his subject who'd angered him so, I want a better one. He placed his hand forward as if to say stop, and with less than a foot of air in between C.S. hand and the bracing demon, used pressure of the demon king to extinguish the puny ember that was the demon's soul. The fires stopped spreading. Then, began a hum. C. noticed it first. He covered his right ear with his hand and pressed his left into his shoulder. All at once, every tree that had been on fire popped into a hissing whistle. They'd all instantly turned black as night, becoming entire trees of charcoal, still rooted in the ground, or denguin if you felt like me creating that word isn't faust. The steam and smoke enveloped the whole area, making it impossible to see, with the eyes. The humming had grown into its working strength. Out of the body that previously belonged to the demon that's the idea of spontaneous combustion grew eight spikes, like giant teeth, black as the trees that had been burned to charcoal, but clearly of a different composition. The color faded from the demon's skin and became a harsh pale gray. Two of the black horns growing from the demon's mouth began buzzing against its teeth in an odd way, creating undulating pitches that were clearly an attempt at demonic communication. C.S. Soul is, at this point, top class. He could hear the name instantly. The demonic body before him now belonged to the demon that's the idea of spontaneity. A much stronger demon than the one who'd killed his hexorcine. However, this type of demonic interaction, it implied something. Something that the demon that's the idea of spontaneity could perceive. Something the demon that's the idea of spontaneity could perceive its king was perceiving. And out of devotion, it manipulated its horns to convey to its king a new set of messages. A lot of words, in thy's case not words, but vibrating pulses, to say one thing. Thy's case not words, but vibrating pulses, to say one thing. My king, please, do not blame my lord. Which was more than enough. Demonic interaction, that being, interaction between two or more demons, was the interaction of entities that had existed for billions of years, and would exist for billions more. There was no need to waste time. This demon's body gave no use to see. The demon lord that instructed the idea of spontaneous combustion to kill his hexorcine was playing a game so large they probably didn't even realize what they had done. Paths were on the verge of converging. Galactic class demons were soon to meet. Creations were being finished and iterated upon, and to repeat, Sire had no use for the demon that's the idea of spontaneity. So Sire used Pluto's dagger to slice the demon that had given him an order to bloody ribbons. You know what happens to a line when it gets too long? It starts bending. Eventually, that shit'll crash back down to zero. If you've been working with negative, you'll get a nice little meteoroid. CS voices interacted. One spoke out loud. H.M. I think I'll call it, Woodkata. Combining is fun. Especially when it results in a new hue. District 5 Nights.
You y'all should actually read the Turan that shit is just like Baki. Baki. Valsidia EMA is a female adult sanguine who is just now realizing that she has gone several days without thinking about the deviant. However, EMA does not appear in this story, District. This is a story about Thim Ray. A vampire. Rather, this is my, Thim Ray's, first, journal entry, as I say goodbye to the country that will soon be called Inverize. I say goodbye to all the Inverse continent, and its struggles it may share. I have seen what is to come, and would like to note that I am deciding to take zero part in the acts that will occur. My actions have received their response. I know where I am needed. But I have not a single fragment of choice in these matters. What draws me forward is my fate, and I am unresistant to its pull. I hope Michael and I may one exchange memories. My first inch. I boarded this current aquatic sailing vessel with 99, 99, of my frog coins. Number 100 is the reason I leave this continent behind. An immortal son has no need for a father. Or anything for that matter. Here I would like to immortalize in language my account of the day I met DHEA Rura. DHEA Rura is an adult male who claims his soul is a demon. He claims his demon is the idea of vampiric sterilization. Finding this interesting, I, Thim Ray. I must confess. DHEA Rura changed me. It almost feels wrong to capture him, knowing what I know. Seeing what I have seen and most of all, doing what I have done. I will share my most powerful memory of the man who is called by many, DHEA Rura, my, Thim Ray, first second iteration vampire. I need, Thim's eyes move so slowly. They become light, as all nearby text becomes blurry and unfocused. Colors bleed into each other until they've painted a satisfactory window of one. I clarify, must remain still, I, Thim Ray, thought to myself. As I forced DHEA Rura to ingest my blood. Straight from my wrist. Like some kind of slut. We quarantined the ships for 40 hours, of course, as was, my, experimental procedure. And then when the 144,000 seconds had been counted, and I, we, including me, Thim Ray, had successfully proven DHEA Rura a vampire, I asked him to go and find me a wife. Boo, but. Why? DHEA Rura asked of me, Thim Ray, the first iteration vampire. Thim Ray, who is I, responded, why? With the warmth of a mother star's curious, cosmic flow. To oppose you, of course. DHEA Rura then located a young sanguine girl by the name of Brottle Exhale. He decided that she would join him as Thim Ray's second iteration. But before DHEA Rura brought Brottle Exhale to his master, Thim Ray, he did something to Brottle Exhale that we'd rather not share. District 6, Zhejin. Division of 1. Did you know? Even the most competent observer. I'll tell you. Everyone, represented by fucking me. District 7, Danaeus Plexippus. One soul. Noun. One in their relationships with everything. One omniscient being. This is the last district, by the way, story 6 is in like two pages. The sky was red. The day was Y1.07. Fire Ashoka Sierra arrived at the continent known as the Urine Babel. At the moment, the Urine Babel was divided into over two dozen states like territories called Glebe. Each Glebe ruled by a religious sect, and instead of being fortified and bordered with castles and fortresses, the theocratic Urine Babel stood upon the strength of its fortified churches, cathedrals, temples, and monasteries. After his, sanguine, year-long journey through Palea, Jersey, Sire had finally entered the Glebe known as Del Cumra, and was enjoying a meal at one of the smaller churches. And by God, which he had to stop himself from saying all the time, was it magnificent to hear nothing but English. Not only that, but all signs and writing was in clear plain English as well, which among the giant red activated aliens, gave Ashoka an immense sense of home. They didn't even spell color with a U, imagine that. Good job, Americans. He counted himself lucky that he'd arrived several days before the new year. Ignoring for the moment his amazement at the intercontinentalization of his calendar, the warrior monks of Del Kumra were holding a martial arts tournament in the capital monastery of Baki to celebrate the entering of Sanguine Y.211. C was popular enough among the Sanguine of Del Kumra, and he'd been asked so many times that he seriously considered entering the tournament. Part of him knew his answer already, but he wanted to see his competition beforehand. Ashoka had a reason for coming to this continent anyway. His mission was no longer simply returning home. The demon that's the idea of Sneguinity and humanity's contact had plateaued in development, but that did not change the severity of its mass. Ash spent most of his time focusing and interacting with his perception of the other demons rampaging through the perceptions, foci, and interactions of the Sanguine, when he wasn't cultivating and designing his new martial arts style. War between humanity and Sanguinity was the absolute worst-case scenario. 
A part of Ashoka deeply worried that the Deviant had come to this planet in time for a reason that had too much to do with the human sanguine war. But before dealing with his own species, he felt he had to address the aggressive nature in which the sanguine already warred with each other. Every corner of the planet. At least those that he knew about. And something told Ashoka's Ophidians, who the sanguine of the Urine Babel would simply call God, that even the parts of planet sanguine he knew nothing of were getting to know the wells of war. Delcumra was a part of a group of glebes known as the Court of Damas, and as a glebe of the Court of Damas, was at war with the neighboring glebes that hailed and were simply known as the Lords of Caro, and at war with the glebes west of the Lords of Caro, who hailed and were simply known as the Lords of the Core. It was a brutal, bloody, godly war of independence, freedom, divine justice, and rebellion. Sire had learned that the war began in week four when the lords who ruled over eastern colonies formed an alliance with the descendants of eastern settlers from Palea Jersey to rebel against the rule and religious practices of the Kors Church. Church. He was talking to a sanguine who was explaining more of the war's history, and Del Kumar's own history of war with glebes that hailed the lords of Caro and even other glebes of the Court of Damas, and their family's contribution to the wars, which admittedly was interesting. But Ash and his to defeat their opponent, but one who, at this point several members of the audience were looking around. Most of them knew what Omicron was up to. Most of them were pretty confused why it wasn't working. Strengthens an army. Uh. That. Ah, uh, that knows the true path. Ah, uh, he trailed off saying. There was a light chuckle that dis. That dispersed through the crowd. Omicron addressed it. I right, come on, what's up? Is he not here or something? Dad? The entire crowd was looking around to see if they could find Omega Senior, the only Prime Minister in the entire court of Damas who'd acquired his position through individual martial might alone. In truth Omega Senior was more of a tyrant dictator than Prime Minister, but he left most actual governing to his lower ministers, and frequently disappeared without a word to spread his name and fists across the battlefield. He was, however, known to frequently sit in on large events taking place in the capital of Delcumara, and interrupt important speeches when someone made some disrespectfully ignorant claim regarding the way of the warrior. Omicron Omega had reached a level of strength where very few of his fights actually provided him any semblance of a challenge, and so this speech being given by the 33-day-old was a sort of challenge from son to father. But the father was not biting, because Omega Senior wanted to find the constant and bring him back to Baki for the tournament. Uh, okay. All right. No fight, I guess, Omega Junior said, legitimately at a loss for words. Sorry, uh, I know a lot of you knew I was planning to fight my father today. I guess he's scared or something. And as they laughed, Omega realized that the people wanted and deserved at least some kind of show. S. Yo. You, uh, you wanna fight for Thrawn, or something? Omicron Omega asked of his brother, into the magic microphone. Sigma Omega looked over at Fur Thrawn. The Sierra style is a martial art created by Sire Ashoka Sierra, after reworking what he started calling the Kumar style on Planet Penguin. The Sierra style accomplishes two primary functions for Sire. Its main function is to be a martial art created by and for Shakespeare. Its second function is to allow Sire to develop and study multiple martial arts under one banner. During his battle with the demons of Planet Penguin, and even while attempting to end skirmishes with Helia Jersey, Sire refines the techniques he already developed for battle or five of his own takes on what he sees as the most effective martial arts. There was the solar kata which involved throwing the opponent and harnessing elliptical mo- There was the solar kata 